ever Conference USA Championship game. The number 21 ranked Marquette Golden Eagles upset winners over Memphis and the number eight ranked Cincinnati Bearcats. Cincinnati seeded number one in the conference tournament and they have already defeated St. Louis and Louisville to get here. Marquette outs in South Florida and Memphis last night. Hello everyone, I'm Tim Ryan here in Memphis and I am joined today by two Hall of Fame coaches for reasons that will become quickly apparent. Our regular CBS analyst, Al McGuire, and from the University of Louisville Cardinals, it is Denny Crum. And uh, the reason why we've got Denny as a special guest today is because, you will shortly hear, Al McGuire has talked himself out. Hard to believe during the other coverage of this tournament, Marquette last night with a big win over Memphis. Well, people had a good ball game. Five. He can hit from outside. Now you watch me. Give him a look. He'll drain it. Sip. Now the cup in close. Now the key to Marquette, I believe, is McCaskill. He plays a one-man zone down low. And you know what? Leave me alone today with your kid. It's too tough. <laughs> well, he does sound a little like Marlon Brando on The Godfather. That's why we've got Denny Crumb aboard. Denny, thank you for joining us. I know you'd re rather be coaching here today in this championship game. Well, it's a pleasure being here in either capacity, but uh, we're looking forward to this one. This ought to be a heck of a game. Well, Cincinnati, of course, a team you know well, and they had a great performance from their young sophomore last night, Danny Fortson. Danny Fortson is a force. If you look at the size of his body, just physically for a sophomore, he's unbelievable. But they also have a great outside attack, in primarily in uh, Darnell Burton. He can shoot it from way downtown. Averaging 19 points in the tournament, let's take a look at the starting lineups for today's championship game, Cincinnati and Marquette. For Marquette, it is Amal McCaskill at 16 boards last night. Ronnie Eford, he has been great the last month of the season. Chris Crawford, the other forward. In the backcourt is Anthony Pieper, the sharpshooter, 23 points last night. And the sophomore guard, Aaron Hutchins. Mike Dean in his second season, he's got these Golden Eagles flying 43 and 18 and rolling into the NCAA tournament for Cincinnati up front it is Art Long and Keith Greger with Ports and Greger will be replaced as the game goes on with a man who plays about 25 minutes Darnell Burton you heard coach Crum talk about him in the back corner it is Damon Flint and Keith Legree Legree the quarterback and he has also played well this last month of the regular season Bob Huggins has his, has had his team to the final four already and his career at Cincinnati their all-time winning this coach. Marquette trying for their first conference title. Cincinnati has won four consecutive great Midwest titles and they're trying to make five tournament titles on their resume. Tom O'Neill, Tom Harrington and Steve Wilmer are the officials for today's game. Marquette will be in gold. Cincinnati in white. Live from the pyramid in Memphis. Anthony Pieper had the hot hand last night in the upset win for Marquette over Memphis, 72 to 60. Memphis ranked number 14 in the country, the upset victims of the Golden Eagles. And Cincinnati on the board first. Gregor, the defensive specialist, has played every game for Cincinnati. Joining them as a freshman. Now Marquette's been playing really well. In fact, I think it's interesting to note that they're the only team to beat Memphis here in the pyramid this year. Marquette with two wins. They beat Memphis at home as well. Of course, Marquette went undefeated in the regular season on their home court. And Gregor again. Keith Gregor. And quickly, a 20-second timeout is called by Mike Dean. Mike is defensive coach. He calls timeouts for defensive mistakes. People fell asleep twice on Gregor. Quick look at the tournament summary as it stands right now. That win by Marquette ended a 34-game win streak here at home for the Tigers. And last night, the score was 72-60. to Cincinnati escaped an upset by St. Louis in that quarterfinal matchup. And then got by Louisville last night to make it here to the final. So Mike Dean uh, responding quickly, as Al pointed out, to a couple of defensive errors, and that enabled the opportunity, uh, Denny, for uh, Keith Gregor, is not known to get you off to a poor love start. Yeah, interesting to note, he's really uh, a three-point shooter. He doesn't shoot a lot, but that's all the shots he usually takes is from the perimeter. But he got two couple quick ones inside there on defensive errors. 
Marquette looking for their first points. This is Lonnie Eford. Hurt his leg last night. You can see his left leg taped. Came back into the game, however, against the Tigers and had a fine night. Good defensive pressure by Cincinnati after a five-second count. You don't see that happen very often. It's just, uh, just so many good players. So it's still 4-0 for Cincinnati. This is Long. Trying to hook it, and he does. Mark Long over Crawford. Zip lead for the Bearcats, the number one seeds in the tournament, ranked number eight in the country, 24 and four record. McCaskill can't get by Fortson, and it will be Cincinnati ball. This is Long in the post. He, he's got uh, a lot of good movement in there. He, and he shoots that little jump hook, which is almost impossible to stop. The only way to stop that is to not let him get the ball in there. Art Long, a 6'8 senior from Rochester, New York, averaging 8.9 points a game. And a travel underneath by Gregor. Interesting. That's the same play they used before where they set a back pick on uh, the guy guarding Gregor and he goes back door there and they've hit him three times. He did travel that time, but uh, he's got two layups already. Zach McCall, the first substitution in the game for Marquette, and he replaces Peeper. Zach McCall, a sophomore at 6'3 from Fitchburg, Massachusetts. He will be a superstar in the next two years. Quite Watch a, Zach McCall. Zach McCall, quite an athlete. He actually went to Syracuse uh, to be a football player. And, Wound up uh, at Marquette and is headed toward what is going to be a fine basketball career. McCaskill on the board. First two points for Marquette. Long in and out. Rebound McCaskill. Outlet for Eford. Eford's pull up is good. Eford's really come into his own uh, in, in this, this this last season. He's a senior that uh, never did score a whole lot, but boy, he doesn't shoot it too much, but he gets the ball in the basket. He's a, he's really improved. 14 against Memphis last night, the six foot six forward from Queens, New York. Get rebounding the miss, and it's Hutchins getting it back. Now kicking out for Eford. This is Crawford with room for three off the back iron. McCaskill for the rebound. Won't drop for him, and off the hands of Marquette's Eper. McGaskill, if he gets in close, he can give you a jump hook here. He doesn't like driving to the basket. He prefers to fade away. <laughs> I, like I'm going to do now. And, 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 and Al, Al McGuire's point. Yeah, that's right. I think he has. <laughs> Can't even hear his uh, his New York accent in there anymore. Fortson <laughs> pump fake and then his foul. That's uh, they've used that play all year long. They just uh, they, Danny Fortson picks down and they they bring the guard up from the baseline and then they he just posts up right in the center and they throw it in there. Now it's interesting, he's not a great jump shooter, but when he takes it to the basket like that, he's really tough. And Marquette uh, has only shot 553 free throws on the year to, to Cincinnati, 663. And that and that's why right there, Danny Fortson, he's also the best free throw shooter. Leading score in the conference. Caskill picked up his first personal for Marquette. 16-36 remaining first half. 7-4 Bearcats lead over the Golden Eagles of Marquette. I don't think I've ever had a uh, my best free throw shooter shoot the most free throws, but I think uh, in Cincinnati's case, that's one of the reasons they win consistently. Absolutely. Fortson shoots at 75% from the line. 8-4 Cincinnati lead. Marquette jumped out in front of Memphis last night, led by 14 at one point in the first half. Memphis uh, battled back to cut it to one at the half, but Marquette was unrattled through the second half and earned their victory, their second of the season, against the Tigers of Memphis. Ebert, watched by Lacroix. 
three, pulls up, used all the iron, the rebound Shaw, and he missed the easy layup, and a foul before McCaskill could make a play. He's a force on that board. First on Fortson, Richard Shaw, the sophomore from LaSalle, Ontario. Missing that layup, but we'll have a timeout on the floor and return with an 8-4 Cincinnati lead. Cincinnati leads Marquette 8-4 here in the first half of the Conference USA Championship game. Tim Ryan joined by Al McGuire, as usual, who can't talk, and Denny Crum, who can, and we're grateful to have him uh, filling in and helping out Al McGuire. Al, try something here. Say something. How are you? Hey, this is okay, Timmy, because I've been helping out for years. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, Al McGuire has been working the tournament all week long. If you joined us, and he just simply used up his uh, voice, he'll be with us uh, during the NCAA tournament. So we'll hope that he's uh, well by the time we get started next week. So we'll let him squeak along here for a bit longer. And Al keeps insisting he feels good but sounds bad. And Cincinnati with victories over St. Louis in overtime and then beating a Denny Crumbs Louisville Cardinals 92 81 last night with a 60% game from the field. You hate to see that when you're the opposing coach. Boy, you're not kidding. <laughs> they're tough enough. Uh, getting, uh, they get 92 points. They're really hard. To so Cincinnati on top by four here over Marquette. This is Hutchins. Sophomore point guard. Shoots at 36%, but he shoots a lot has the same percentage from three-point range. So Hutchins uh, and his coach, Mike Dean, not troubled by his problems from the field. Coach Dean's uh, very defensive-oriented. You notice earlier in the game he took his uh, star three-point shooter out because the guy that he was guarding got two quick baskets on him, and he wasn't going to tolerate that. Richard Shaw picked up the foul for Marquette on that play. 6'11". Sophomore. Canada. Sportson. Sportson pulls his way up, showing his strength with a follow. Oh, he has a horse in there. 10 for Cincinnati. Deeper back in the game for Marquette. Golden Eagles can't play from behind. They gotta be in front of Ty. It's a Shaw, his turnaround missed everything, just grazing the glass on the far side of the hoop. Flint, Damon Flint, the Legree, and his pass goes out of bounds, a turnover by the Bearcats. Gotcha. All right, here's uh, Danny Fortson. Uh, he was fouled already probably a couple times. It didn't seem to phase him. He gets it right back up, got hit in the face, and still got it in the basket. Strong young man. Just a sophomore, too. Right. Hope the NBA likes him. I'd hate to see him have to play against him two more years. <laughs> Good point, Coach. <laughs> The perspective that I guess you're all faced with some of these outstanding young talents who are on the other teams, right? You bet. <laughs> Doesn't have a position in the NBA. He has to move out to power forward. He's got pretty good feet. McCaskill in double team traffic there. Off for Ronnie Eford, and Eford hits. Two points. Good ball fake there, and he just moved laterally. A lot of times they'll move inside that three-point line. He just moved laterally and, uh, you know, hit that shot. Four points for Eford, 10-6 game. Cincinnati on top. Juleson in the lineup now for Cincinnati. Jackson Juleson, number 40. Another big man. And Legree missing. Juleson on the follow. Nice play. Sophomore from Grayson, Kentucky. Yeah, we recruited him. Didn't get him, obviously. Six foot nine, sophomore. Foul underneath the basket. All right, this is McCaskill here. Nice, uh, I mean, effort on the shot, but a nice ball fake. Uh, got wide open for the jump shot. Caswell picks up his. And Hutchins at the line. The substitution. Flint goes out and Burton comes in. Burton. 
Fortson's first personal sending Hutchins to the line. It's interesting to note that uh, Cincinnati is switching a lot to keep Peeper from getting uh, his perimeter shots. He has yet to, to get a three-point attempt, and he's deadly out there. The other thing Cincinnati wants to do is stop Hutch penetrating onto Main Street. Keeps it a paint. Hutchins made both. He's an 82% free throw shooter to cut the margin back to four, 12-8. Cincinnati on top. Underneath is Gregor. He's Gregor. And that's Peeper's man again. And uh, But they're setting back screens on him. Someone's got to switch that or he's going to get lots of layups. Hutchins driving. McCaskill on the follow and he's fouled. All right, if you watch, uh, there's people. See, he gets picked there, uh, and he comes right around. They, they're looking for him. They're setting that back pick on his man, and the guy guarding him isn't switching. Jackson Juleson picked up his first personal foul, sending McCaskill on the line. Peeper comes out. Zach McCall, number 25, returns to the game for Marquette. Got to give Coach Huggins a credit for that. He's screening Peeper's man with the, with the center either Long or uh, Fortson, and uh, their center is uh, not going to switch onto that smaller guy and then uh, and leave Peeper guarding the center, so he's getting wide open coming off that uh, back pick. Gasco makes one of two. 14 to nine. Green trying to get it into Fortson and reaching in was McCaskill. Two on him. That can be crucial because they don't uh, have anybody in guard uh, Fortson if McCaskill can't. Uh, now Abraham Abrams is a great shot blocker himself. In fact, he and McCaskill both have blocked 50 some shots during the course of the season. Is Al Abraham in and does the first job on Fortson and again blocked him twice. Long up to finish that one out. That was interference. Looked like it interference. It looked like it was over the cylinder. Wasn't called, and it's 16 to 9. Good kick out to Crawford from Hutchins. Crawford down the paint and hits. They're real good at that ball fake. They penetrate, kick it out, and when you fly out at them, they ball fake you and penetrate and shoot the little jumpers. They're real good at that. Two points for Crawford, his first basket. Gregor in and out. Fortson on the rebound. And it's going to be Marquette Ball. This is offensive goal, Tennant. Yeah. The ball was inside it the, was, the uh, cylinder. It was above the cylinder. It looked, uh, should have been called, but wasn't. That's, uh, Abraham's third block shot uh, since he's been in the game and he's had 51 on the season and he's real good at that and that's uh, that could be a real big factor when it comes to being able to guard Fortson in there. Hutchins pull up. That's what makes him tough. He can really shoot the ball but he also is a great penetrator. You got to be awfully close to him and when you're that close he can get around you so quick. 16 to 13 Cincinnati by three. Burton, dangerous shooter for Cincinnati, a foul away from the ball, likely Crawford on long. It is Chris Crawford. I'll tell you, so much of what happens in the post is based, based on what the officiating does. I mean, some of them don't call that stuff, but a lot of them do. Here's a look at it as we take a time out here. Cincinnati by three points. Offensive goaltending puts his hand inside the cylinder. Well, you can't get a better view with the net, although I suppose somebody can make the argument. Well, bounced off the rim and may have been outside the cylinder. We got a hand on it. It's center. Of it. They didn't call it. It's two points Cincinnati, and it was their last two. It's a three-point game. 11:32 to go. This is the first ever championship game in the new USA Conference. Cincinnati Conference USA, I should say, and Cincinnati having won four consecutive great Midwest Conference titles, trying to make five titles in a row with this game this 
afternoon. Keeper for three. And a lot of room, a lot of time. First look. First look. Good look. Yeah, right there. Keeper. And that was off the transition. Uh, Cincinnati got back, but they didn't match up well, and he was wide open, and they kicked it out to him. Tied at 16. Seven to zip run by Marquette to get back even with the Bearcats. Clinton and all kinds of traffic on the baseline, and he's fouled. Damon Clinton. Abraham picks up his first. See the penetration, and then he kicks it out, and he takes his time because there's nobody guarding him, and he doesn't miss many of those when he's open. Anthony Pieper had 23 points against Memphis last night. Four of five from three-point range, and he was nine of 11 in all from the field. Fair night. Not a bad night for Anthony Paper, the junior from Wasaki, Wisconsin. Father's a coach. Coach Dean's on his guys about their defense. They're having a tough time stopping Cincinnati. I know how that is. We had a tough time early in the game, too. Cincinnati by two, 18 to 16. Damon Clint from the free throw line. Keeper closely guarded by Flint. Keeper, Hutchins, Abraham. This is Abraham inside. Got his feet tangled up there uh, over Forbes and he lost his balance and he wasn't in good position to shoot that one. Feet inside for Legree, and he can't make it. The follow by Long off the glass, no good. Fortson misses, gets it again. And finally, a foul. He'll just hang in there, Fortson, and eventually he's either going to score or he's going to foul him. Abraham picks up his second. That's key. That's two on uh, McCaskill and two on Abraham. Slow whistle, famous Cincinnati. No question, uh, because of their strength inside, I don't think there's any question about that. You, you give those guys uh, uh, the ability or the, the right, since they're not calling them real tight in there, to, to be physical, and they will dominate you. Fortson, we mentioned, shoots from here at 75%. He makes the first. Tim Ryan with the Irish Godfather, along with uh, Denny Crum, Louisville coach, two Hall of Fame coaches here today. <laughs> Al McGuire won his championship when the Marquette team was called the Warriors just a couple of years ago, 1977. McCaskill. Hutchins inside for Crawford. Tough shot out of bounds like that. Watch Burton. <laughs> Burton shot off the front iron. Legree in deep to rebound and then lost control. Bearcats come up with it. Three point try by Flint. No good. Fortson battling in there. Basket will not count. Fortson gets the foul. Offensive foul. He, he just leaned right into him. Yeah, this is this shows you right here, right uh, right of verticality. Fortson jumped right into McCaskill, and uh, if they call that a foul on the defense, there's no way to guard anyone. That was a good call. Second personal on Danny Fortson. Danny Crum has mentioned uh, both McCaskill and Abraham, the big men for Marquette, have two each. Burton with a miss. Uh, Hutchins with a miss, pardon me. And Burton now the other way for Cincinnati. And his miss gathered in by Ronnie Eifer. Quickly up to Hutchins. Marquette has to go to zone. Otherwise, McCaskill will be on the bench soon. McCaskill a turnaround and missed. That's about Legree's fifth or sixth rebound, it seems. Uh, he's one of the smallest guys on the floor, but he goes and gets that ball. He does. He averages just under six a game. 22 to 16, Cincinnati. Cincinnati has uh, really been uh, intimidating to uh, Marquette inside. They haven't got good shots in balance there, except earlier when they were shooting their jump hooks. Every time they've faced up, they haven't got a clear look at it, or they've been out of balance. And they've missed them all. Shot caught. Two seconds on the shot clock, and Hutchins did not get it away. So a turnover by Marquette on the shot clock. Oh, 
There's Long inside. Nice little spin move and a good use of the backboard. Uh, you got to move your feet uh, to stop that one. You can't be stationary on defense with him. And that opened the six-point lead for the Bearcats. Eight minutes remaining first half. They let McCree have the outside shot. That's his only soft part of his game. So they lay off. But they will boost him up inside, too, Al, uh, especially against Hutchins, a little guy like that. Here's Long on the free throw line and now driving the lane and is fouled on route. Another good use of the ball fake there. Nice head and shoulder fake here. Can't finalize. Three shots. Art Long at the free throw line. 22 16 Cincinnati lead. And Mike Dean substituting. In the bonus, Long will take another free throw try. There's Cincinnati with the edge on the board that Danny Crumb has been referring to. In the 7:41 remaining first half, Cincinnati 23, Marquette 16. 23. Here at the Pyramid in Memphis, Cincinnati leading 23 to 16 in the first ever Conference USA Championship. 7:41 to go, first half. Neither team are shooting the lights out, as you can see. 32 uh, percent from the field, Marquette 33 for the top-seeded Bearcats. And McCaskill in early foul trouble for Marquette. Danny Forts in six points and six rebounds, and only one of seven from the uh, field. But there's still been a force underneath. I'll tell you, the uh, the real key to this game so far has been the, the defense of both these teams. I mean, when you hold the other team at this level to 32 and 33 percent shooting, uh, you've played good defensively. And both these teams are really good defensive teams. Richard Shaw, number 34, the sophomore from LaSalle, Ontario, and for Marquette, along with Eifert, Crawford, Hutchins, and Peeper. Crawford baseline, Long fronts him and does a good job. The rebound is gathered in by Keith Greger. Click for the alley-oop for Long. Perfect pass. A great pass off the, off the move. That's a tough pass to make. 25-16. Jackson Juleson in for the Bearcats. That basket will count. Yeah, it's interesting on this lob pass. If Flint wasn't a left-hander, he'd had a little tougher time making that pass. But being a left-hander made it perfect for him. Long's a great jumper, too. Bearcats with Gregor, Juleson, McGree, Flint, and Long. The lineup. Hutchins hits the free throw. 25 to 19. Two things the Cats wanted. Stop Peeper and don't let Hutchins get in the paint. Seven points for Hutchins. That's Al McGuire, in case you're wondering. You just made that comment. Uh, <laughs> Damon Flint. Nice control on the short jumper in the paint for Damon Flint. That's what happens when you gamble on defense. If you don't get it, good players will burn you. 27 to 19, and that's the voice of Denny Crum, the Louisville Cardinals coach, our special guest today, aiding the under boys, Dell McGuire. Crawford, nice turnaround on the baseline. Four points for Chris Crawford and a six-point game, Cincinnati. With McCaskill in foul trouble, they need Crawford to step up and have a big game. Our catch been getting balance from their team throughout the season, and more so the last month of the campaign. It's got to make Mike Dean happy. And that's what you said they've been getting. See if they can sustain it here. Foul by Shaw. Danny, you talked about some real good defense. Well, they both concentrate on it, don't they? You bet. You, yeah, if you look at that, uh, Marquette's allowing 38-7 and Cincinnati 38-8. Now, that's great defense, and that's a season stat, not just uh, in the tournament. Right. No, they're up there with, uh, with the best of the best, as you can see, in that category. Flick from the free throw line now has five points. The physical play, second half, favor the Cats big time. Why? 
because they have a longer bench and a more physical bench. And if he can bang down low, he'll get the uh, he'll get Marquette in foul trouble, which they already have. But he'll show more in the second half. Okay, Marlon. I mean, Al. Uh, 20, I'm going to put a horse's head in your bed. <laughs> 28 to 21. That's, yeah, what that makes, that's what makes him so tough. He's already got a couple layups and draw some fouls on the penetration, and that time they played off him just a little bit, and he buried the jumper. Missed by a long rebound by Abraham. Here's Hutchins again, and Hutchins throws up the three off the front iron. The follow missed. Abraham, I believe, with that try, and Clint, nice pass for Gregor, and is it going to drop? No. There's another pass that couldn't have been made by a right-hander very easy. That left hand uh, with Clint coming down that left side really makes it uh, good for him to make that kind of a pass. Shaw rebounding, Peepers miss, and it's going to be Marquette ball off the hands of Jackson Juleson. Near the conclusion of today's game, Al and I and uh, Denny will select a genuine Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Eford will inbound it for the Warriors. Tight coverage by the Bearcats. Along the line is Hutchins off the glass. Great effort. The little general. Yeah, tough. He's tough as nails, and he's got such quickness that uh, and he can shoot the three, too. That's what makes him so tough to guard. 11 points for Hutchins, who shoots from the field this season at 36%, but also from three-point range at 36%. And he's not afraid to throw it up there. And his coach encourages him to do so. Gregor outside. And Clint stepped on the line. You notice uh, two things in this game. Max are the same thing for both teams. They haven't let Peeper get started. He's only got that one shot, and Burton has yet to hit a three, and they haven't. He's only had one attempt, I think. They've really done a job on each other's outstanding three-point shooters. Bearcats only four turnovers in this first half with 4.20 to go. Three-point game, Cincinnati on top. Outside of Flint, there's no scoring in Cincinnati. Five is up there. Jaron Lovett, the freshman from Blair, Wisconsin, hitting from the baseline. 6'10 freshman. What a nice touch there. For yeah. A lot of confidence on that shot. He has not had a lot of playing time this year. 6-0 run for the war for the Golden Eagles now. Burton driving. And the basket will count. And Lovett picks up the foul. What quickness on Burton. Yeah, he's got a great quick uh, first step. He might have cleared. He might have cleared out a little bit in there too. Let's see what he does here. He makes a quick first step. Now watch the left arm. Uh, it's a pretty good shot. Great shot. Great move. And Burton makes it a three-point play. 31 to 27. The score with 3:51 remaining. Cincinnati by four. Well, those Egyptian drawings and hieroglyphics you saw in the Kemper commercial weren't from this pyramid. This is the pyramid in Memphis. We're inside that. Right here, where all of those NIT titles and NCAA accomplishments of the Memphis Tigers are hanging high and proudly. And Memphis was expected by everybody to be in this championship game. They figured to be in against the top-seeded Cincinnati Bearcats, but instead they were upset last night in the semifinals by Marquette. And Marquette trails by four with 3.51 to go. Tim Ryan with Al McGuire and Denny Crum, the coach of the Louisville Cardinals, who uh, suffered defeat at the hands of Cincinnati in the semis last night. Graciously uh, joining us this afternoon here and adding much to our commentary. With yeah, you don't have to keep reminding everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's another tournament ahead. Okay. And everybody expects you to be in it. Are you expecting to be in it? I hope so. <laughs> they will. Two national championships. I was going to say, being as you've already won the big one, 80 and 86, we're not feeling too badly for you getting knocked out here. And another 20-game win season for Denny Crumbs Cardinals. Hutchins with the miss. Burton with the rebound for the Bearcats. 
Two three-point shooters guarding each other here. Burton and Piper. Pete Pass, get close. This is scoring machine. Yeah, he can shoot it from anywhere. Really tough. Uh, he can post you up like that, shoot the fadeaway, shoot the threes, and he also can penetrate, as we saw just a few minutes ago. Five points for Burton. Brandon in the game. Bobby Brandon. Sophomore from Cincinnati Molar High School. Bearcats. Hutchins works his way in. The shot deflected. The follow is good. Abraham. You notice every time Hutch gets in there, he scores. Something good happens. How's Levette on the follow? Now Levette. He's the first zone took three by Marquette. Garrett Levent, the freshman, with four points now. The 6'10 freshman from Blair, Wisconsin. In a championship game. This is Brandon, pump fake. It's hung up with Abraham breaking it up. Good defensive change there. They were having a tough time uh, stopping Cincinnati, and uh, this is a pretty good move there. But they didn't know they zone. Coming up on Penn's Oil at the half, Pat O'Brien and Quinn Buckner will be along with scores and highlights of the many championship games going on around the country today and tomorrow, of course, there'll be another lineup of championship games. This is a very loosely officiated game. I mean, there's not, they're not calling hardly anything at all. It's who's ever the strongest now. They got him with the hand there, but... Normal. I mean, they're just pushing and shoving and leaning. Well, but I like Danny, but it's consistency. I don't care if you're competent or incompetent, as long as you're consistent. So if you're consistently incompetent, you're good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe that's why they're working the championship game. Oh, 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 oh. Uh oh, do I feel a little scratching going on? <laughs> Tough job, this officiating. Oh, yeah. Tough job. I wouldn't have it for anything. Every call makes somebody happy. Yeah, and you wouldn't want to have those coaches on your shoulder working over the whole game long either, would you? Touch your hands. <laughs> Off for Levette. Banks at the Frenchman. He's got six points. Hutch took him to the finals of the NIT last year. There he is. Nice little turnaround. Great use of the backboard. I love to see guys use that glass. It uh, makes those shots a lot easier. Long picked up the foul, his second. And Lavette has averaged five minutes a game this season, the freshman. And here he is in the championship game of Conference USA and contributing mightily here in the first half. Missed the free throw try, but still had the two points on the play. It's a two-point game. I think that's key for three. Six rebounds for a point guard. Most uh, point guards are out uh, waiting for the outlet pass to get the break guard started. He's back in there rebound. And that's about his average, too, uh, per game. So uh, he's got a whole half to go here with one minute left in the first. Efer nails the line drive, or nailed it off the rim, I should say. And Legree, there's the alley-oop. Burton couldn't get it. The rebound comes back. And whoa, what a shot. Darnell Burton. He can get the ball in the basket from any angle. It doesn't matter. You just put it in his hands, and uh, he's a threat. Seven points for Darnell Burton. Spread about seven seconds. Game shot. Legree picks up the foul, his first. 22.6 seconds left in this first half. They're in the one-on-one. -on -one. Hutchins at the line for the Golden Eagles. Well, they fouled the wrong guy there. Uh, not that it was intentional, but he's, I think, their best free throw shooter. Shoots about 82% on In fact, uh, this whole Marquette team is an excellent free throw shooting team. That's one of their real strengths. Hutchins at 82% in that category. Dwayne Streeter, a senior forward, 6'8", from East St. Louis in the game here for these final seconds, first half for Marquette. Mike Dean doesn't get in his ear. He doesn't like anybody in his ear. So Mike yells to the other four guys. You can think, don't get in my ear, coach. Don't get you know too what? Close. I wouldn't get in his ear either. <laughs> He's that important. <laughs> 
Christian's hit, and we've got 35 to 33, a two-point game with 22.6 left. A little 2-2-1 two -two zone press here to slow the ball up so they can't get it down the floor as quick and hopefully not have time to get a good shot. Good speed. I, I didn't like it for one reason, Danny, because now it's a bonus foul. That's the 10th foul, so they get two shots. Yeah, well, you, obviously they didn't want to foul, but there's another dimension to Burton. Uh, he makes a great assist there, even though uh, he was fouled, didn't get the basket. That was a great touch pass. Juleson was fouled by Lovett, his third personal, the freshman, who's uh, contributed mightily in all categories, but a little too mightily in that one. Juleson with two points will try to make it four. He makes the first. I think he's Cincinnati's best free throw shooter. Hero of St. Louis game in the overtime game. Yeah, no question. Gilson shoots from the free throw line at 81%, the big man. He got a key offensive rebound on a missed free throw and uh, was fouled and hit both free throws. So a very clutch play. And Call and Shaw come back in for these final seconds for Marquette. And Gilson, this is the second. The rebound is good from Monroe, Roderick Monroe. Makes it a five-point game, and two seconds left. Peeper lets a three-pointer fly, won't go. Well, an evenly matched first half. At the end of the first half, the score, Cincinnati 38, Marquette 33. Pat O'Brien and Quinn Buckner will be along from New York with pins oil at the half after this message and a word from your local station. As we returned to camp, we were surprised. USA Championship at the halftime. It is Cincinnati 38 to 33. I'm Tim Ryan with Al McGuire, our speechless coach from Milwaukee rather than Seattle, and a guy who can talk and coach also, Denny Crum from Louisville. And it's an interesting first half. Neither team exactly uh, scoring uh, in an impressive fashion from the field. 38% for Marquette, 40% for Cincinnati. But, but Denny, uh, Cincinnati and Marquette play such great defense, they're both playing well. Yeah, they've neither one given each other hardly anything at all. In fact, if you look at the game, the big difference in this game is, is has been the offensive rebound. Here's Danny Portson uh, on a miss, but he gets the ball back, gets it right back in the basket. They've out-rebounded Marquette by 12, 28 to 16 in the first half. And there's the versatility of a Burton. He can shoots at the fadeaway jumpers, takes it to the hole, and uh, Hutchins, Hutchins uh, on the penetration. 13 points for Hutchins in the first half. You see those field goal percentages and the difference in rebounding. And uh, we talked about uh, Fortson. Last night, he played only seven points in the first half against your Louisville team. Came on strong in the second round up with 21 points and nine rebounds. Today, he's one for seven from the field, Al McGuire. And, and uh, at this point, has only six points. But it appears that Bob Huggins doesn't get too concerned. He knows that when he needs him in the second half, he's going to be there. He has to be there at the end of the game because you get his head down low. It's automatic. He only played nine minutes in the first half. I am passing the baton to the gentleman that won two national championships. I'm out of here, Danny. I'm gone. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll take care of it. That shows you the depth that uh, Cincinnati's got to not have to play him that much in the first half and still be ahead. Absolutely. And we've got depth in our announcing crew, too, because we've got Danny Crum here filling in for Al McGuire the rest of the way, and we hope Al will be ready in full voice for the NCAA tournament as Peeper starts it off for Marquette here to start the second half. Uh, this was a call play, I can guarantee you, starting the second half. He, they thought he was going to shoot a three, but he penetrated. Uh, great move by people. And he'll go to the line as well with a chance to make it a three-point play. 38-35 to 35 the score now, Cincinnati. Three on long for the Bearcats in the personal foul department. And it is a three-point play and a two-point game. Legree starts it out, Cincinnati in white. Working left to right. Keith Legree contributed mightily in the rebounding department in the first half. Seven. Flint. And foul called on the play, and Hutchins is going to get the call, I believe. Let's double check it. It might be Eifert. No, it is Hutchins. His first. Well, the first ever Conference USA championship taking place here in Memphis at the Pyramid. And there's a look at how these teams uh, got here. Cincinnati defeating Louisville last night. And uh, Denny keeps uh, 
hating to be reminded of that fact, but uh, we, we remind all basketball fans what they already know. There's Mike Dean, his Marquette Warriors upsetting Memphis last night to get here against Cincinnati. Uh, Louisville, uh, one of the teams expected uh, to be it at the big dance and there could be as many as uh, five teams from this conference I think everybody expects four for sure and Louisville's among them I hope you're right Marquette Cincinnati and uh, Memphis uh, could be the other three but who knows we'll find out tomorrow night on the CBS selection show at 6 30 Eastern time Gregor trying to keep it inbound and off the leg of McCaskill good job by Keith Greger. This game's changed an awful lot. If you look at all the body foul and then they let they allow to go on in there. I mean, they're just leaning and pushing on each other. As long as you use the body and not the hands, they just don't call it. It's, uh, the game's become a lot more physical than it used to be. Portson, it'll count. And he's fouled. McCaskill. That's three on Amal McCaskill. Fortson's got so much strength in there, but it's interesting though. There's McCaskill straight up in the air, and uh, the contact is actually initiated by Fortson, which is a good play if they'll call it that way. Got his third, and it is just a couple of minutes in, less than that, into the second half for Marquette. 42 to 36 now. Cincinnati on top. Chris Crawford driving. The junior from Kalamazoo, Michigan, six points. Leading rebounder in the game has got the ball in his hand right now. Keith Legree at seven in that first half. Big first half on the boards for a point guard. Legree, Flint, Gregor, Fortson. And Long, the starting lineup this half for Cincinnati. Another foul. Marquette, it's Crawford. And that's his third. He's got him good there. I tell our guys, though, if you're going to foul him, don't let him score too. Try to foul him hard enough he doesn't make the basket. Obviously, you can't always do that. 32 to 38. Long driving underneath Crawford. Good job by Art Long. 11 points for him. Hutchins. Inside from McCaskill, nice play by Aaron Hutchins. Great pass, uh, really sees the floor well, very unselfish. Five points for McCaskill. McCaskill had only seven in last night's victory over Memphis, but he had 16 boards. Fortson lets the jumper fly. That's the first perimeter shot Cincinnati shot this half. They've gone inside every time. They were in their high low there and they couldn't get it into forts and so Long just buries it from about 17. This is Crawford. Three point try off the iron. Look, re rebounding. Fortson. Fortson in all kinds of trouble there, and it's stolen away by Peeper. Seven turnovers now for the Bearcats. Peeper driving baseline. Nice play by Anthony Peeper. No harm, no foul. Eight points for Anthony Peeper in a four point game. Marquette sticking with the Bearcats. Flint in the paint, his jumper misses. Rebounded by Eford. Hutchins in deep again. And McCaskill. And McCaskill foul as he made his basket move. Watch Peeper here. They, they're so conscious of his three-point shooting that uh, they get out a little too tight on him, and he makes a nice penetration. Did you see how he held onto the ball, took the contact, and then released the ball? Great body balance. Chris Crawford gets a rest. Two 
Five points from McCaskill. Abraham is in the game for Chris Proper, number 40. Juleson getting ready to report for the Bearcats. And that'll bring Art Long out. So the Bearcats now have uh, Gregor, Fortson, Juleson, Flint, and Legree. Caskell at the line. He's joined by McCall, Hutchins, Keeper, and Abraham. Three-point game. Cincinnati 46 to 43 with 16.07 to go in this Conference USA Championship tilt. Fortson in the paint and it's knocked away by McCaskill cleanly. Here comes Hutchins, two on one with McCall. And Hutchins goes the distance. 15 points for Aaron Hutchins. 5'9 sophomore from Lima, Ohio. Kind of rubbing it into the Bearcats of Cincinnati, Ohio. Three outside. Flint. Fortson. Well, he's so big and strong in there that uh, he just gets near the ball, he gets it. You can't hardly get around him. Abraham outside, now off for Peeper. Hutchins, Hutchins putting a lot of miles on his sneakers today. Works his way to the far corner, lets the jumper fly off the iron, and Legree up for another rebound. That's nine for him. Jolson. Five points for Jackson Jolson. Twenty-second timeout call. I think this was by uh, Marquette made this took this timeout. Five-point game, Cincinnati on top. Fourteen thirty-three to go here in the second half. They're tough. How do you try to uh, to organize when you've only got 20 seconds to get your message across? Well, you either you either got to make a point about what we have to do to stop them, or give them an offensive play to run when they get to the other end. You don't have time to do both. That's about yeah. it. Yeah. And you kind of you hope that uh, it's a momentum breaker if the other team has, has got the momentum, but it doesn't always work that way. Is that as much of the choice as you make in calling a 22nd in terms of trying to stop momentum? Yeah, I use the, I would I rarely take one to uh, to call an offensive play, usually to stop the opponent or do something, to make a change. Good coach. Score, score when they call timeout and makes possession. Like right now, Golden Eagles should score. Squeaky Marquette by McGuire, the former Marquette coach. 14 <laughs> 21 to go in a five point game, Cincinnati on top. 14 21 to go, second half, Cincinnati by five. I'm Tim Ryan with Al McGuire and Denny Crump. The reason we've got a three man group here is because our guy Al's lost his voice. Denny's team lost the game. So we put the two of them, put the two of them together here. We're both losers, huh? <laughs> Al, Al, try something here. What are we going to say about after that timeout? That a coach that calls a timeout. The next time they touch the ball, that was an offensive timeout. They should score or have a good shot. And Marquette has the ball. Let's see what happens here. Crawford pinned in the corner by Juleson. Good defense by Cincinnati, but it results in a foul nonetheless on uh, Abraham. Abraham goes to the line, and the foul will be by Monroe, Roderick Monroe. Cincinnati played zone. Good move by Coach Hunt. Uh, the foul's on Juleson, not Monroe. Juleson, it picks up his fourth. Long comes back into the game. Juleson goes out. Jackson Juleson. Abraham to the line for Marquette. 
Field goal percentage shooting now obviously has improved here in the second half. Neither team able to shoot so well, but Benny Crum and Al McGuire agreeing in the first half, there was a lot of real tough defense contributing to those low percentages. So Cincinnati is 0 for 3 from the three-point line, and Marquette's 1 for 9, so it's not been a big factor yet. 50 to 46. Fortson, Fortson, watch by Crawford. Outside for Legree. Steal by Marquette. This is Peeper. The call, acrobatic jumper missed. Abraham on the rebound, and he's fouled. I think uh, Abraham called long no, on the, on the uh, rebound there. That's three on Abraham. So Abraham will sit. The call also comes out for Marquette. Casco. Keeper. Eifer, Crawford, and Hutchins starting lineup. The Golden Eagles on the floor. Art Long, 13 for him, and he's uh, been a real force in there, uh, especially with Fortson on the bench most of the first half. Hutchins trying for three, the miss. Rebound by Fortson. Three for David Flint. And Long is charged with basket interference, so that will not count. Ball spinning around the rim. I see it again. Close. Oh, uh, they yeah, they called him for basket interference here. Yeah. Six-point lead, Cincinnati, 12.46 to go. Marquette is only one for nine from three-point range. Keeper, who had such a good game in that department, unable to get it going. There's Crawford inside. Keeper had four out of five from beyond the arc uh, last night against Memphis. Not been a factor from three-point range today. Long is stopped by Abraham, and that's going to be another foul on Abraham. There's a good bounce pass into Crawford. Uh, watch his move to the middle here. Good little ball fake and a uh, little fadeaway. Nice shot. Probably got fouled on the arm, but it wasn't called. Four personals on Abraham now. Long makes it 14 points. Yeah, Abraham's out with his fourth foul. That makes him bring McCaskill back in. This is McCall to Hutchins. Caskill watched by Fortune and knocks the ball loose two on one. Damon Flint. Whoa, Flint. Acrobatic effort, but missed the shot. Hutchins the other way for Crawford. And Crawford is hammered by Long. Now Burton make it. Darnell Burton, not Long. Burton's first. Chris Crawford, 73 percent from the free throw line. Nine points for Crawford. 
game's about as even as you could get it. It was five points at halftime. It's four now that nobody's been able to open up a lead. And they'll probably come right down to the wire like that. So it's now a three-point game with a timeout on CBS Sports coverage of the Conference USA Championship game. We'll continue after this message and word from your local stations. The line of Bob Huggins, the Cincinnati coach, upset at this play. Denny, what happened? Well, McCall steps in the lane. He's an offensive player, which means the free throw should not have counted. Uh, he was in there before the shot, and uh, Huggins was upset about that, and probably rightfully so, but uh, that was an official's judgment. Obviously, that's Steve Welmer and, and Huggins uh, yakking back and forth, and I think, uh, you know, Huggins had a legitimate gripe. Well, the basket did count, the free throw, and it's a three-point game. Cincinnati with 11.46 to go, leading 53-50. to 50. Jim Ryan with Al McGuire and Denny Crum, the Louisville Cardinals coach, and Hall of Famers. An amazing thing happened there, though. The official won the argument. <laughs> that was a real upset, huh? Yeah, really. <laughs> Long as <well> by McCaskill. <laughs> Well, that's four on McCaskill. Now they got big men both in trouble. Abraham and McCaskill, the two big men they use the most. Both with four. Plenty of time left. Now they got uh, Levet. Levet Le back in. Yeah, the freshman that had a real good first half. He had six points in the first half. Played real well. And he's also got four personals. Three on Levet. Pardon me, three. Long at the line for the Bearcats. So the Marquette big men in foul problems here with a long way to go. That's 16 points for Long. That's a big game for him. He had 12 against your Cardinals last night along with eight rebounds. Averaging 8.9 a game over the season. So he's had two big games in a row. You need your seniors to step up uh, this time of year. They've got to play good for your team to have a good, good tournament. Crawford, reverse layup. I think he's a senior, too. He's played well. Uh, this Crawford is junior from uh, Kalamazoo, yeah. That's uh, good news for Mike Dean and company. Long is free because they're double and triple team and awesome. Fortson missing underneath. Keeper up high for the rebound. Hutchins pull up jumper over Burton. Won't drop for him and rebounded by a long. Up quickly to Damon Flint. Now Keith Legree will set up the play for the Bearcats. Three point Cincinnati lead. Legree really slowing it down this time. Trying to get it into Fortson. Not a good pass and it's a turnover. Ten for the Bearcats now. Call outside, Levet. Crawford's turnaround missing. And the fourth personal on the young freshman, Levet. They're at Levet. And they're into the bonus here, so Fortson will go to the line for Cincinnati one and one. Yeah, you can see him from behind here, oh, reaching over the top, and uh, that's an obvious foul. And of course, Fortson uh, is the best free throw shooter, but that puts four fouls on uh, all three of three of the four big right. men uh, on Marquette's team. Other than Crawford, uh, they all have four fouls. Six ten freshman uh, put in some good minutes in the first half. Got six points, but he did pick up three of those four fouls in a very short time at the end of the first half. We're in the bell lap the last 10 minutes. This is what the strength of Cincinnati should show. They are the top-seeded team in this tournament. Danny Crum talking to you before the game. I know that uh, even though they were seeded number one, uh, you felt that the way Marquette's been playing in uh, recent weeks that uh, they had every uh, good chance to win this. Well, th this game's not over, but I, you definitely have to give Cincinnati the edge right now. Foul trouble is really uh, makes it difficult for uh, Marquette to compete because Fortson and Long are so good inside. And, uh, Crawford is the only real experienced player in there that, that's got a chance. Shaw is back inside. Keeper, nice try. And Shaw with a follow. Keeper made his own follow. 
almost uh, made a circus play, but a good follow by Shaw for Marquette, and it's a one-point game. And a 20-second timeout called by Bob Huggins, and he is in the face of Legree. Great penetration. He gets knocked out of his hands by Burton. He catches it, almost gets it in, and look at Shaw. What a great hustle play. Here it is again from another angle. Nice change of pace and direction there. Knocked out of his hand by Burton and just misses the layup, and Shaw gets a nice follow. We talked about the three big men being in uh, foul problems, and they run in uh, Richard Shaw, the sophomore. He usually plays ahead of Levet yeah, in this that, circumstance, and uh, so uh, they're really getting some good work from their bench. They got five big guys out there. I don't have five guys in five years that size. <laughs> for, I want to have to move to Wisconsin. <laughs> Shot done in the fouls. Good play, good bench management by Dean, Mike Dean. Excellent job. Mike Dean has proven uh, as this season has gone on that uh, he's not only a good basketball coach, he's got a pretty good basketball team. Yeah, they played in the finals of the uh, NIT last year. And, uh, nice drive by Keith McGree. In his first year at Marquette, and uh, that certainly gave both his team and Marquette fans a lot of confidence. Legree's first basket and a chance to make it a three-point play. Yeah, here's great penetration. Shows you his strength, too. He got hit there by Shaw and uh, still powered it up. Uh, real strong uh, point guard. 6-1 senior from Statesboro, Georgia, Keith Legree. We have a three-point game here at the Pyramid in Memphis. The U.S. the Conference USA Championship game. Keith Legree at the line, having scored his first basket. But he's been a fierce rebounder and the quarterback of the Bearcat attack, of course. And it's now a four-point game. Cincinnati, the top seed, against the number three seed, Marquette Golden Eagles, who upset Memphis to make it into the final. I'm Tim Ryan with Al McGuire and Denny Crump, our guest analyst this afternoon, coach of the Louisville Cardinals. Keeper has uh, only, I think, had one three-point shot this game. Uh, I don't think he's even got another attempt. Gaskell on the miss. Good feed. Damon Flint traveled. That basket will not count. 11 for Cincinnati. It's interesting if you think about this. Here's Mark. They got uh, four, the three of their top big men in foul trouble. And they're still only down four points. I mean, uh, and they're getting killed on the boards. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, what is it, 40 to 27. Out rebounded, 13 rebounds. Still in there. Four-point game. This is Hutchins. He's been tough all day, and he nails another. 17 points for Aaron Hutchins, the sophomore guard. We saw Peeper do the same thing. You go in there, he takes a contact, and then releases the shot. Uh, great body balance by Hutchins. Fortune's time. Into fortune. Agree. That was uh, Al McGuire, in case you were wondering if he just joined us along with another large portion of our audience today. Legree with the follow. Two ten. quick baskets for Keith Legree. That's his 10th rebound, too. Nine assists and 10 rebounds. It's five points. Shows you point guards don't just have to, to uh, no, stop, you know, stop. be assist man. Keith Legree is a perfect example here of a, of a kid that's really helped contribute to his team. Eight minutes to go. Four-point game. Cincinnati by four. Al McGuire has been working the regional telecast of uh, this tournament throughout and uh, lots of boys along the way. So Denny Crum graciously joining us. We're very grateful for that. Crawford's turnaround. Shaw with the follow. It's batted away by Fortson. And we have a timeout on the floor with 7.39 remaining. Cincinnati 60, Marquette 56 for the championship. Back at the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee. Conference USA Championship game. Cincinnati by four over Marquette. Cincinnati eliminating Louisville in the semifinals last night. Marquette upsetting the Tigers of Memphis, who had won 34 straight games in this building. Beaten by Marquette for the second time last night. First outing was at Marquette. Marquette at Cincinnati have split this season on January 13th.
Marquette lost at Cincinnati 91 to 70. And then just last week, the first of March, they beat the Bearcats in Milwaukee 74 to 72. Marquette ball. Hutchins with 17 points. Leading all scorers. Art Long has 16 for the Bearcats. Deeper, a three-point factor in the win over Memphis last night, has been silent in that department today. Working in the paint. Follow misses by Crawford, and it's taken away by Law. Marquette with three big men in foul trouble. McCaskill, Abraham, and Levette, each with four fouls, and McCaskill getting ready to come back in. Well, there hadn't been many open shots out there. Both teams have played really well defensively, and I mean, it's a war in there. Hutchins for Crawford. Crawford backing in. Long. Get some help. Forcing the miss. It'll be Marquette ball. Casco comes back in and Shaw goes out. Richard Shaw. So Casco with 6.28 to go in there with four fouls. Keeper for three. Can't find the range today. Long rebounding. First attempt he's had this half from outside, I think. They've done a great job uh, defending the three against him. Agree. Nice block by McCaskill, but Fortson is fouled as he grabbed the rebound of that block. Oh, fouls on Crawford. That's now four on here's Chris a, Crawford. Here's a penetration on uh, Keith Degree, and there's McCaskill uh, switched off to help, and Fortson got the rebound, and Crawford fouled him. Eifert comes out for Marquette. And call back in, number 25, Zach McCall. And Fortson, good from the line, connects again. 75% free throw shooter. That's 14 for Fortson. Make it 15. And a 62 to 56 lead for the Bearcats. Marquette needs a basket here. And Hutchins tries for it, rejected by a long, but a foul before he got there. Burton picks up his second, Darnell Burton. Well, you talk about quick, little change of pace and change of direction here on the dribble, and uh, Hutchins is just so quick. Such a good ball handler. 16 foul on Cincinnati this half. Hutchins driving baseline, missed the reverse, got his own rebound. He's in there among trees and kicks it back out to McCall. This is Beeper, his first three-pointer. He was 4-5 last night from there against Memphis. That's his first today. Big basket there. Huge, 62 to 59, 11 points for Beeper. Missing McCaskill up to grab it. Hutchins for Peeper going hard. Baseline goes down heavily. Long and Burton were both there. I'm not sure which one got him. There's Hutchins uh, on the shot. I think. McCutcheons gets the rebound. Oh, no, that was a kick out. I'm sorry. That was a uh, keeper. Kicked it out to Piper there. 
for the three. That was a real big shot. They were down six, and that closes it to three. And at this stage of the game, you can't afford to get too far behind because if you've got a foul, uh, you, you're going to end up get, getting beat 20, and it makes you look bad, even though you're not getting beat that bad. It, uh, games get wide open at the end if you're not making those threes. Peeper goes to the line after driving baseline there and fouled by Long, who has four on him now for Cincinnati. And Long with four, Jolson with four for Cincinnati, but four of the Marquette Golden Eagles in deep foul trouble. And Peeper makes it a one point game, 5 0 5 to go. Well, Memphis wanted their own Tigers in here for this championship game, and they were favored to be here against Cincinnati. Knocked off last night by Marquette, but this crowd enjoying this close game for the title. Long, good effort by Long underneath McCaskill. Well, that's a tough shot under pressure. 64-61. Was that back in the game for Marquette with four fouls, along with McCaskill, and it's Hutchins. That's a great screen there uh, by uh, Lovett. 19 for Aaron Hutchins. And Bob Huggins calls a Cincinnati timeout. We have a one-point game with 4.22 to go. The Bearcat 64, Marquette 63. Tim Ryan with Al McGuire and Denny Crum here at the Pyramid in Memphis with 4.22 to go. Even canine fans in here in the Pyramid. Got to give Marquette a lot of credit here. Uh, I mean, to have their four, their best four inside, or three of their four best, and another sub with four fouls, and none of them fouled out yet, and they're right in the basketball game against a really strong uh, physical uh, Cincinnati team. Cincinnati took their first time out. 422 left. <laughs> bubble, bubble, turn, bubble. <laughs> Gregor and Clint. Feed into Burton and we're going to call it on Burton for pushing off on Hutchins. That's three on Darnell Burton. All coaches have their pet peeves, but my pet peeve has to do with what they allow the offensive post players to do in there. If, if you allow Burton to do what he did there, there's no way to guard him. I think, you know, that was a good call, and I'm not um, opposed to posting up tough. But, boy, I'll tell you what, it, it's hard to guard a guy if you let him do that. Well, it sends Hutchins to the line. Bob Huggins, of course, disagrees with you now, but he might philosophically agree with you, except if it happens to him, as it did there. Right. <laughs> well, I don't like it to happen to my guys either. <laughs> and Hutchins creates the first tie in this game. 20 points for Aaron Hutchins. Well over his season average, uh, but a guy that can shoot the basketball, and Mike Dean... Continues to tell him to let it fly. You're going to have your good days. And when he's hot, he's hot from three. Shoots those at 36%. And he makes both from the line. And a one-point lead, Marquette. Yes, 2-2-1 zone press uh, by Marquette. This is long for Keith oh. Rager. That's a good call. That was a travel. And a Gregor call against Gregor, and uh, Hoggins is really hot at his team this time, not the officials. This is really a, a tough conference. I don't care, uh, you, top to bottom, but we had four teams in the top 25, and uh, before Charlotte got their 7-2 center hurt, they were right up in there, and Tulane's right real close, too. Well, I think Tulane is probably still a bubble team for the uh, NCAA tournament. Could very well be. And I know that you're trying to be conservative and say that you're probably a bubble team, but a lot of folks think you're going to make it in there. Foul call off the ball underneath the basket, and it's going to be on Levette, the big freshman, and that's five for him. 
Not the foul, sorry, the foul's the other way on, on Fortson, and Levette thought it was on him, too. <laughs> they were battling in there. Yeah. He was he was fearful that it was him. And now, instead, he's at the line. He's shooting one and one. And missing. Marquette leads by one. 3.39 to go. They're going to go inside the Fortson, uh, or else they're long, or else they'll get uh, the outside shot by Burton if they can get it. They just haven't been able to get it here. They got Burton posted up on Hutchins here, and he just takes him in there and uh, just jumps over him. He's just too strong. Six two, Burton, and plays bigger than that against the five nine Hutchins on that last one on one. And timeout is called by Marquette. 66 to 65, the Bearcats by one. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Oldsmobile, the official car for NCAA championships. Cellular One Wireless Communications, clear across America. And by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Pick Enterprise, we'll pick you up. Tim Ryan with Al McGuire and Denny Crum, the Louisville Cardinals coach here in Memphis at the Pyramid. We have a one-point game. The Bearcats back on top. Marquette led briefly by a point. 3.04 remains to settle the Conference USA Championship. Meanwhile, Texas and Texas Tech battling for the Southwest Conference Championship. That game's still underway. We'll be going to the conclusion of it. And then that's followed by Purdue and Iowa in Big Ten action. Purdue has already clinched the Big Ten Championship. Of course, the Big Ten has no postseason tournament. Purdue certainly uh, on their way into the NCAA tournament. That's three in a row for them in the Big Ten. Dean uh, Cady's done a great job. Absolutely super. Done. You're right. This is Lovett, and Lovett is fouled. Great experience for Jared Lovett, the 6'10 freshman from Blair, Wisconsin, averaging five minutes a game. He's been pressed into action, and here he is in a championship battle. Yeah, he missed the front end of the one and one last time. This is a two shot foul, I believe, and uh, you know, which uh, maybe help him relax a little bit. It's a tough spot for him to be in with less than three to go. Uh, the face of a very young man here, a freshman. Fortson picked up his fourth personal. Seven points for Levette. He got six near the end of the first half when he came in. And there's that uh, Texas Tech, Texas. Up uh, right now, uh, leading uh, the number seven ranked Texas Tech team, 42 to 39. Long way to go in the second half, however. 2-2-1 two, two, zone press again by uh, Marquette, uh, making Keith Legree give the ball up. Marquette leads by one. Two and a half minutes to go. Gray lobs it over to Burton. Damon Flint. Gray trying to get it into Fortson. Broken up. Up defense by Marquette. And great Hutchins brings it up. Great weak side help there. And then, of course, Hutchins, he's so quick, he just goes gets that loose ball, which he's really good at. How do you rate him among the guards in your conference? Well, there's a lot of really good point guards in this conference, a lot of them, but he's certainly uh, as good as any of them. Eford on the miss, the rebound by Long. I'm going to recommend him to the NBA, too. Because <laughs> he's only a sophomore, right? Get him out. <laughs> All these tough sophomores in the league. Gonna look at those guys for two more years. <laughs> Foul off the ball. A little push inside, and it's against Keeper. His first. Darnell Burton will go to the line. Each team with 10 team fouls. Cincinnati 18 of 24 from the free throw line in this game. And Burton, normally reliable, missing on that. Levette goes out. McCaskill comes in with 1.47 to go in this first ever Conference USA Championship game. 
It is a one-point lead for the Golden Eagles of Marquette, and Burton has tied it up. Cincinnati seeded number one in the tournament, ranked number eight in the country. Marquette ranked number 21 and seeded three in the conference tournament. Going to the wire. Al McGuire uh, suffering uh, from some throat problems here with all of his work this week covering the tournament. Regional cable coverage. Down to five on the shot clock for Eford. Eford off the glass. Great move, great use of the left hand there, too. Six points for Eford. That's where your seniors step up. That's what you need. He had 14 last night against Memphis in the upset. Two-point Marquette lead. Fortson inside. McCaskill couldn't stop him. We are tied at 69. Under a minute to go for the Conference USA Championship. And Marquette will take a timeout. 50.2 remaining. Tied at 69 here at the Pyramid in Memphis. There's the picture in the Conference USA Championship. First ever. It's taking place at the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee. The Tigers of Memphis were expected to be here against Cincinnati, the top two seeds in the conference. But it is Cincinnati and Marquette playing for the first ever title, and they're tied at 69, 50.2 seconds left. Cincinnati with two timeouts remaining, Marquette one. And the position arrow is Cincinnati. And here's how they got here. Cincinnati had a bye and then defeated St. Louis and Louisville. Marquette with a bye, defeated South Florida. And the upset win over Memphis last night. The Tigers had won 34 consecutive games in this building. But it was the second win of the year over Memphis by Marquette, having beaten them in Milwaukee earlier this season. Forty-six seconds down to 45. Marquette with the basketball. Uh, definitely got the edge here. They got two possessions to one uh, based on the clock. Uh, of course, turnovers and things can change that. But. 11 seconds as Keeper goes for it. He's rejected by Long. Ball still inbounds and now out. And it is Cincinnati ball. 27.2 remains. That means uh, they don't have to take the shot till the end. And uh, See, I think Cincinnati's got two timeouts, and I believe Huggins is going to take one of those. And uh, so they'll each have one timeout left. Trying to get the timeout now. And finally it comes with 24 even left. We are tied at 69. Cincinnati has the ball. And a timeout when we return. Two teams you'll be seeing in the NCAA tournament playing for the first ever Conference USA Championship. Tied at 69, 24 seconds left. And here was Marquette's chance. Here's a great defensive play, a great weak side help by Long. Watch him come over and make the block on Peeper's shot. Great, uh, great timing on that. That's, uh, that's a crucial defensive play. There again, you got a senior stepping up. And the ball wound up in the hands of Cincinnati as it was knocked out of bounds off the hand of a Marquette Golden Eagle. So it is Bearcat ball. The top seeds have the ball with 24 seconds exactly remaining to play. Marquette has Crawford, Keeper, Levette, Eford, and Hutchins on the floor. Well, it'll either go into, it'll either be Fortson or uh, Burton, one of the two, uh, taking this shot. Fortson, Long, Burton, Legree, and Flint for Cincinnati. They go deep back to Long for the inbounds. And now it is Legree. Watched by Hutchins. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Eight. Six. Here goes Legree, kicking it out. Long, shoots, no good. Rebound, too late. Fortson scored, but it's too late. 
Huggins says the ball was up. The officials were very firm in saying no. We'll have overtime. Long's going to take the baseline jumper here. On the penetration, Legree kicks it out. Crawford helping. Fortson uh, pinned him inside, got the rebound. Zeros are up before the shot. Very close. Huggins. He's been scribbling notes all over the place here, trying to help out Denny Crum, the uh, rookie to his left there. And, uh, this, we're into overtime to settle the first ever Conference USA Championship. Cincinnati controls and puts in. Basket of overtime and he's fouled. 19 points for Danny Fortson. Started slowly again in this game as he did last night. And McCaskill is fouled out. Doubt about it. This is uh, Cincinnati's second overtime. Uh, St. Louis took them into overtime in the opener. Uh. That's right. In the quarterfinals, they won that game 62 to 59, being tested by St. Louis. So here they are going for it all in overtime. Marquette trailing by two. Hutchins has had the hot hand that misses off the back iron. The rebound of Damon Clinton. Keith Legree organizing the attack. Same play. Fortson picks down on Burton and posts up. Watched by the freshman Levette. Fortson on top of him. So strong. But he's not only too strong, he's got a great touch in there, and, and all the Marquette kids have four fouls on him. I think uh, they're, they're going to have a hard time stopping him in there if they don't keep the ball out of there. That's uh, 21 that's points for Fortson, and there's a three from Efer. Ron Efer, the senior from Queens, New York. Marquette and Cincinnati have each won an overtime game without a defeat. Yeah, Marquette beat us in double overtime at Freedom Hall. Yeah, that was a huge, huge game for them. And there's a three-pointer right back from Darnell Burton. 76-72. Cincinnati, 13 points for Burton. Hutchins driving, a foul off the ball, and no basket. McGree picks up the foul. Abraham coming into the game for Marquette. And Lavette goes out. All right, here's uh, the screen down for Burton, and here's a. Uh, he was on the line. He was on the line, and they didn't catch that. Should have been a two-pointer. Good catch there, Denny. We've had a couple of things happen that way. The earlier goaltending or basket interference call it was not called. See, he's right dead on the line. And Hutchins cuts it to two again. It's 23 points for Hutchins. He's just had a heck of a game. Agree, Burton, Long, Flint, Fortson for Cincinnati. Abraham, Crawford, Eifer. Here we go. Hutchins Long's going to screen down. Post up Fortson and Long. And Burton goes for three. Those down picks for, for Burton are tough. Uh, he's hit two of them, both of them here in the overtime. Crawford for three. Nails the line drive, Chris Crawford. And that's something. I guess uh, both teams are getting a little tired. It always shows up more on the defensive end. Here we get uh, three threes in a row, two from Cincinnati and one from uh, Marquette, and we didn't get any for hours in this game. Very good point, uh, Denny. And 
Ports it underneath, misses, follows, and hits. Four points, Cincinnati lead. 23 points for Fortson, as he did last night against Louisville, coming on strong in the second half and into the overtime here today. Well, he should be the freshest. He didn't play a whole lot in the first half, and uh, Huggins has done that with him a lot this year. Uh, he's tough in there, no question. Hutchins inside to Crawford. Crawford can't get through long. And that's five so on. There's a power move by Fortson. He just takes it in there, ball fakes it, gets it right out against the glass, comes back, gets it again, and keeps it up high. He doesn't bring it down. That's a good lesson for young kids. Don't bring that ball down inside. So Fortson fouls out. 23 points. Great effort by Fortson. Got to give Crawford credit for that. He could have shoot, shot a little turnaround jumper there. They knew uh, Fortson had four fouls. He took it in there on the dribble and took it right to him. That brings Jackson Jolson in. 145 to go in the overtime for the Conference USA Championship. And Crawford misses the first free throw. He's got 15 points. And he makes. Big three point throw. game. Big free throw there. It's a one, one possession game now. It was two before and can make a big difference. Crawford, a 73% free throw shooter. 81 to 78. Fortson gone with fouls. Cincinnati. Wilson in his spot. One on one by Burton. Burton over Peeper off the front iron. Marquette rebound. Abraham. Shoot it. Sophomore Aaron Hutchins uses the three to hit the three. That's what they needed. Nice screen up there by Crawford. 26 points. For sophomore Aaron Hutchins, who averages 13-1 a game. Tremendous effort for him. I caught myself coaching. I told him to shoot it there. He was wide open. He made it. Darnell Burton wants his way in with a jumper. 40 and a half seconds left in the overtime. 18 for Burton. Cincinnati by two. Hooks it, won't go, rebound, flip. No foul called. Had to foul to stop the clock. And now they get a stop with 16.1. Flint's about a 60, what, 3 or 4% free throw shooter. He's somewhere in that area, 65. 67% free throw shooter, Damon Flint. At the line for Cincinnati, they're up by two. First ever conference title at stake. Tied at 69 at the end of regulation. And Flint does the job and has another. Huge free throws in a four-point game. This is Hutchins kicking it up for Peeper. Peeper missed the three. Rebounded by LaGreen. Hutchins second personal. Had to take it there. LaGreen with another big rebound. Well, Marquette got the shot they wanted. Keeper penetrated, kicked it out to Peeper, and uh, hit the back rim with it. It was right dead on line. 
Of course, if that shot goes in, they're still down one, and they've got a foul. But uh, here's uh, Legree at the line. He shoots 56, 57 percent from the free throw line. I think he's not a great free throw shooter. 7.2 seconds remain. They got to score twice, or else get fouled on a three-pointer and make it. Uh, all Cincinnati's got to do is uh, not foul. Just, just Bearcats uh, on the verge of the first ever Conference USA Championship, and it would be four tournament titles in a row for them, conference tournament titles. They won four in a row in the great Midwest. Hutchins for three, and he hits. 1.3 seconds left. A one-point game, 29 points for Aaron Hutchins. No quit in that young man as he hits the three to make it exciting for the final second and the third. We have a timeout here at the Pyramid in Memphis. Now that says it all right there. Cincinnati by one. They'll have the ball at a 1.3 seconds left in the overtime. Here's that shot by Hutchins, Coach. Yeah, as the outlet pass, he crosses over in the middle and just pulls up. Perfect balance and swish. He's tough. He's now really we see tough. both their uh, both teams gathered around their coaches. 1.3 seconds left. What can they be saying? Every, America wants to know, Denny. What would you say? Well, I, I tell you, this is uh, fairly simple at this point. All Cincinnati wants to do is get the ball in bounds. Uh, in fact, uh, there's nothing wrong with throwing it clear to the other end to somebody if you if you can do that. And, uh, what does Mike Dean say? He's got to get the ball back. They either got to get a steal or foul immediately, but either way, uh, you know, they're going to lose a second on the clock, and uh, it looks, uh, unless there's an offensive foul or something. Flint will inbound it, gets it to Juleson. He's just going to hold on, and that's it. Cincinnati's Bearcats have won the first ever Conference USA Tournament Championship 85 to 84 in overtime against the Golden Eagles of Marquette who upset Memphis to get into this final and uh, what an outstanding tournament and outstanding season for the Golden Eagles. And the top seeded Bearcats hang on to win it. What a difference in uh, the regulation game and the overtime game. Regu regulation Marquette makes two out of 11 and Cincinnati all out of four from the three-point line in overtime Marquette's two for two and since he's four for four now there you go the top seeds stepping up when they had to and we congratulate Bob Huggins and the Bearcats now the genuine genuine Chevrolet players of the game Aaron Hutchins from Marquette and Art Long from Cincinnati is celebrating its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. Long at 18 points and 11 rebounds. Hutchins for Marquette, 29 points and six assists. Congratulations to both these teams, particularly to the Bearcats of Cincinnati. We expect to see them both be big factors in the NCAA tournament. And so for Al McGuire and Denny Crum, I'm Tim Ryan, returning you to Pat O'Brien in New York. All right, Tim, thank you very much. And for Al McGuire, we hope that he rests his voice.